Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Hello. I've got a whiskey for you from a Titan. Ooh. New Titan. Cliff Smith. Daniel, in the distance, did you hear that? I do. Did you, did you just burp in the I, midst of I hearing? I burp in the midst of hearing. It feels like it's coming from Rhode Island direction. No, I want to camp out I here for that. I want to camp out here just a minute. <laughs> you can burp and hear at the same time? Oh yeah, I'm multilingual. That's very impressive. Particular single malt Scotch yeah, whiskey. Yeah, this is a Douglas Lang. Yeah, yeah. Uh, independent bottle release. Yeah. Of Kulila. Okay. Uh, only. We just mentioned Kulila in the previous show. I know. Hmm. Uh, only eight years old. Very light color. I think. Isn't that what I said? I don't know. It had an age on it, and now I'm struggling to find it again. I don't know. Come on. I even wrote this down, but now I'm nervous and trying to compare it. Maybe it's not. Maybe it doesn't have an age on it. All right, well, there it is. I knew I'd, okay, thank you. In tiny, <laughs> tiny print, yeah. aged eight years. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, when I was looking this up earlier. So that's why that was in my head, because mm. it was. Okay. Thank you, Cliff Smith. Very light color on the Whoa. nose. Oh, that is young smelling. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that is. It's young looking. Sour you, apples. You get the actual, almost some grainy new making quality. I think there. this is a third fill barrel. So if you consider the, okay, actually that's not accurate for Scotland because uh, Sc Scotland's first fill is putting whiskey into a used barrel. Mm -hmm. So I think this is at least a second Scottish fill hmm. where it went American whiskey and then Scotch and then this. Because even at eight years, that's pretty light. Yeah, that, that barrel is doing, um, it's yeah, probably spent most of its barrel energies, scientific term, barrel energies in the previous occupants. Uh, this though. This is so young, that, so that young, malt and fruit, sour fruit. Jumping out of the glass though at More 50, than the smoke. 59.8%. Yeah. That is really, really high. And covering up the smoke. I'm struggling yeah. to find the smoke and Kulila is, a yeah, smoky the smoked ham is kind of like a third layer. Yeah. Hmm. Good night. That is high drama, man. That high proof thing, that's high drama. Oh. I'm, an, I'm not on a roll. <clears throat> well, know. I am on a roll if missing is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. What are the stakes? Oh, no, I'm not. Come on. Do you mean, what stakes? I'll, I'll pour you a little more of this eight-year-old Kulila. <laughs> Ah, on the rim! <laughs> I know. Oh. I feel like you thought about it. I did. Yeah. Well, I should have gotten no stakes, because then... Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, so... There's a saltiness in there. I'm, I'm starting to acclimate to the grain a little bit, but it was so yeah. sour. At the very beginning, and yeah. And apples and fruit It's and... starting to give me a very... unmatured... Mm-hmm classic set of Isla flavors. Like just young and punchy and brash. You're, they're there, but they haven't settled down. I feel like I can almost smell the fermentation as much as I can smell, or like the new make hearts, right. as much as I can smell anything else. You know what this is? Hmm. This is something that would either be really off-putting or profoundly interesting. Yeah. 
If you're not a whiskey nerd, if you're not, I mean, even if you're like into I Love It, you're like really nice, posh Islas. If you put your nose in this, be like, oh gosh, this is kind of brash and punchy and young. But if you're a nerd, you want to see what yeah. those beloved flavors are like when they're earlier young. up, like earlier yeah. in the process, further upstream, this is really interesting. This would be a great AB comparison in, yeah. this cla in a class. To see what happens to those flavors yeah. Yeah, over time. I think um, it's, okay, this is a weird reference, but. I've been drinking a lot of mezcal recently. I had a mezcal cocktail last night. Go ahead. A new mezcal place opened up, a mezcaleria opened up in Waco, of all places. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, and they've got like 60 different mezcals. Come on. And there's this sort of, to what, the what's truly- it? Do you remember what it's called? What's it called? Uh, Marie Mezca, the mezcal place? Yeah. Yeah, no. Just mezcaleria. Yeah. I didn't even know that was It's thing, next but. door to the Hippodrome in downtown Waco. Okay. Um, the, and when you get the mezcals that are being done on like home clay pot stills mm -hmm. and things like this, you get this really agriculture forward, young, grainy, smoky combo. Mm -hmm. This is overlapping with young mezcal. Interesting. In a way that I have never experienced before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've probably had maybe uh, a dozen mezcals in my life. Yeah. You know, Obviously, some of those multiple times, but different bottles. Yeah, a dozen different ones. Um, that's not nearly enough to know kind of the spectrum, the no. range of what's possible with flavors in mezcal. No, I'm talking outliers. Okay, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If you, I poured this for you, and you yeah. know whiskey, n not in a million years would you mistake this for mezcal. Mm. It's definitely the a outlier. Whiskey. The outlier mezcal, you it's say. It's the outlier flavors on this mm -hmm. have an overlap with the outlier flavors on some of the mezcals I've been drinking. And now I'm getting like a... The core is still totally different. Now I'm getting a mossiness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try it. There it is. Oh. It tastes like Kulila. Oh my gosh. It tastes like Kulila, but that proof? Mm. Cranked. Yeah. Beautiful. I gotta say, <laughs> no, um, it's meatier and more peppier words, pepperier. This caught me off guard. Yeah. But like, I really don't like the nose a lot. So much that as I tipped it up, yeah. I felt just the whisper of a gag reflex. Really? Yeah. Wow. I think this hint into that sickly, like, bile kind of sour oh, note that sometimes. Uh, shows up in really, really young, funky malts. I did not get that. Like when people say baby sick, yeah. you know, it's like there's that sour kind of malty, now, I young malty I thing. will say I do like the taste much better oh, than yeah. the nose. 100%. Yeah. It's easily four plus times as good as the nose. Oh yeah, and at that proof of 59.8%. But as I lifted it, <coughs> my brain just went, don't drink that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? That ABV of 59.8%. Yeah. I think I'm gonna add even more water. But you gotta pour me some more because I made that? Oh yeah, yeah, because you didn't make that. So really it's a pity pour. It's me going, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> there, you got some pity too. Oh, thank you. Actually, I gave you too much pity. Yeah, <laughs> I need to re-add water to mine again. Okay, I added a bunch of water to mine now. Mine's probably cracked down below 50. Yeah. Hmm. One of the more interesting things that it I've softened. Learned, oh, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little bit of a the threat of a vanilla showing up. Mm hmm. Interesting. Hmm. 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 Yeah. One of the more interesting things I learned about Scotch, hmm. uh, as opposed to American whiskey, is how much wider they can get in the cuts. Yeah. Because they're going to have so much more time in a barrel. Yeah. Mm. And so on those, if you cut, you know, if you bear, like pull out of a barrel young, yeah, it's just not ready. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, um, we can put less time. We have narrower cuts if we want something nice in the States. Uh, but we have less time in a barrel. Mm -hmm. So it's a trade-off. Oh, that's better. A little water improved this dramatically. Oh, now there's some fruitiness starting yeah. to tease up. Is that a fruitiness or a floral? Mm, it's floral. Yeah. And it's great on the palate. Mm -hmm. Still the nose is a little great. funky. Now, keep in mind, you are playing with a young, well, yeah. gosh, it, like 
it, it's so presenting. It's yeah. a presenting as a young yeah. kind of flavor set and maturation. Uh, but it's really interesting if you want to go exploring and do the nerdy thing with your whiskey there. There's really no one-to-one -one comparison in age with scotch. Mm -hmm. Because like a one-to-one -one comparison in bourbon yeah. is it was all new oak. Yeah. And so you can tell a five-year-old Kentucky, five-year-old Texas whiskey, five-year-old Wyoming, five-year-old California that all was new oak. Mm -hmm. You can get a pretty... A direct one-to-one -one example of environment. Yes. In Scotch, it might have been a first fill, might have been a second fill, mm -hmm. might have been a third fill. Yeah. Might have been in an island climate. Might have been moved down to uh, storage facilities in the lowlands. Like you just, there's no like, what does eight mean in Scotch? Well, it's like, well, it depends. <laughs> like so many factors. Yeah. Uh, you want to know why I haven't said we should pull out the standard Coolula for comparison? Hmm. The proof is going to be so wildly different. Oh yeah, it's there's not, not going to be. But at the same time, just in case. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, jumping whale, Orchard House is the only compass yeah. box I liked. The others had only exciting names. And when a whiskey slurper gets disappointed a few times, uh, he or she forget the brand for a while. There's plenty out there. Yeah. So they've had they've been underwhelmed. Yeah, we reviewed box. the Orchard House and we loved the delicacy of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think we like Canvas too. Yeah, canvas. those two were both involved. Saxon. Yeah, so you like that really delicate approach to their blends. I most Compass Box drinkers like the weird their nerd territory. They like the big weird outlier, interesting complexity things. Yeah, but it is true. I've noticed the same thing hmm. that if somebody tells me about a, a distillery. I'll try it, and if I don't like it, I'll show it for a little bit. Yeah. I'll, I'm then like, oh, we'll try the older Dude, one. First impressions, I'll try that. first impressions are everything. Two disappointing tries in the range of one distillery. Mm -hmm. I won't go back for a very long time. Yeah. No, it's just... Because there's too many other things to drink. Yes. Uh, and <laughs> it's the same thing with uh, music, with bands. Mm -hmm. It's like, one oh, song. this band is amazing. You got to try this out. And here it's like, yeah, that's okay. And they try to know, that's okay. That band's not for me. Yep. Nine months later, a year later, something pops up. It's like, holy crap, what is that? I love that song. Different album. It's, yeah, it's the yeah. band that <laughs> yeah. totally wrote off. Damn it. <laughs> uh, we have AKA Re uh, Reject. How important is it to read the tasting notes, blending notes of a whiskey before drinking it? I would say not at all. Not at all, but... Is it best to know what flavors you should be looking for before the first sip, or is it better to go in blind? Try to discern what you're tasting and then check the notes and see how close you are. That's what I would do. Yeah. I, and I do it a lot. I'll just pour something, I'll explore it, come up with what I think, and then I'll grab the bottle on the second pour yeah. and say, what did they tell me I should have been getting? And I'll agree or disagree. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh yeah, you know, I didn't pick that up, but you're right, that is in there. Interesting side note. I would love to see a Whiskey Tribe episode where you give false tasting notes to victims, I mean volunteers, <laughs> and see if they actually find those oh. wrong notes or if they just straight up call you out on your BS. That sounds so cruel. It, well, here's, here's what I think would happen. Some people, and it's going to be obviously different from person to person. Yeah. Some people are going to be like, I don't know what's happening. And they say, do you find like um, a scotch tape note? Yeah. And, and they're like, going to be like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because and it's, this is where it gets cruel. Social. Right. The social pressure. Yeah. And that they think that there's a right answer. Yeah. They think they don't want to be wrong. There's a correct answer. It's like, I think I see that because they're on camera and they don't want to be embarrassed, even if they're not on camera. Yeah. It's like, well, they're like a whiskey guy and they are going to know better than me. And I don't want to, to think like I can't taste what yep. they're tasting. They're there's that element of it, um, but what would be most fun is if that episode happened with people that we knew for a fact. Yeah, like Brianna. Oh yeah. You say something that Brianna didn't find, she's gonna be like, like oh, what, what no, are you? When you're smoking crack. Are you high? What? Yeah, but if you and I both beforehand have a list, yeah, and we're just 100% on board mm -hmm. with this, all these tasting notes. Yeah. Do you get this? Yes, me too. I promise yes, you. Yes, absolutely. And she's the only outlier. And just watch <laughs> her get more and more infuriated. <laughs> But if there is, yeah, if there's like a handful, a small gauntlet of people like that. Yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, taste is very subjective. Yeah. Best whiskey is whiskey you like to drink the way you like to drink it. Uh, but there is this thing that very often happens. I mean, this has happened with you and me countless times on the show. Mm. You'll name a note, and I wasn't finding it at all. Yeah. At all. But then you say something, and then just you projecting that onto me, I'm not sure if I'm actually tasting it or if... I remembered that and simultaneously experienced the flavor, and now 
my brain tells me I'm also experiencing what you just said. Almost all the time with a strong personality with someone in the background in whiskey. Yeah. If they all get something that because you say it, mm-hmm. it's not power of suggestion. It's mm-hmm. you helping them connect the thread to oh, a memory okay. that they weren't sending it down that path. Yeah. And then you and say you something said, like, send it down this path. Yeah. And you do. And you're like, son of a bitch. Holy crap. There is sandalwood in there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Hmm. But it's, it's. In a no- the more novice they are, the more power of suggestion can fuck with them. <laughs> the more they have experience, the more a suggestion can show you things. Yeah. We're thing. always have to be really careful about that as psalms or as guides, which mm-hmm. is like, how much do you leave someone just floundering because mm-hmm. you don't want to overrule their experience? Right. And versus how much do you give them at least some guide rails to hang on to? Yeah. Without yeah, yeah, yeah. dominating their their experience of a whiskey. Fair enough. Okay, a fun romp. I wouldn't recommend it, recommend it for people that are in love with the posh stuff. Yeah. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. Hey, fight me a fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. With us.